How can we show the behavior of the block level interface APCTRLHS in practice? This lecture will take an example of a simple floating point accumulator to represent the signaling of the APCTRLHS interface in action by using an integrated logic analyzer. Let's consider the floating point accumulator circuit as an example of a multi cycle design in HLS. This circuit receives a sequence of floating point numbers and accumulates that as its output. For example, this figure shows the output generated for this sequence of input. As shown in this diagram, our design is simple. It consists of a floating point adder and a register. Now let's describe the floating point accumulator in HLS. The top function receives an input and generates an output. We need a static variable to save the previous results. Then we need the addition and finally sending out the result. As the state register provides the output directly, we should ensure that the synthesis tool does not optimize that and merge it with other registers in the RTL design after synthesis. For this purpose, we can add the volatile modifier to the static variable declaration. Now we should add the interfaces. First of all, let's add the module level interface. Here, the APCTRLHS is selected. We will control the hardware module execution and run that whenever an input value is ready. Then we add the argument interfaces. Also, we apply the pipeline optimization program. However, because of the data dependency in the code, the function cannot be pipelined. We will see this later in this lecture. Note that, instead of using the volatile modifier, we can guide the HLS tool to implement the output with a dedicated register. For this purpose, we should add the keyboard register at the end of the output interface definition. This slide shows the final design in Vivado. We have the float accumulator IP. Then, we have another IP that receives the accumulator output and shows that on the 7-segment display. However, as we cannot generate floating point numbers easily on the board using the basic input mechanisms such as slide switches, we need another IP to generate a sequence of floating point numbers. This IP generates a floating point number whenever we requested that through its input by a single cycle pulse, which a push button will generate. Therefore, we need a debouncer and pulse generator IPs. Also, we use the AP done output of the number generator IP to start the accumulator task. Let's have a look at the number generator IP. It has an array of 10 numbers which sends out one of them when it's requested. The top function has one input and output. To keep track of the array index, we need a static variable. Then we define a register to keep the generated output stable, to be used by the downstream IPs. Then the code checks the generate input. If it's one, it uses the index register to access a number in the array and send that out. Then it increments the index and makes sure that it is between zero and nine, as the defined array has only 10 elements. The APCTRLHS interface is also assigned to the module. Now, let's see the design in action. Let's first write the float accumulator in VitaSHLS. For this purpose, open the VitaSHLS and create a new project with the name of float underscore accumulator dash VitaSHLS. Set the top function name to float underscore accumulator. And don't forget to select the basis tree board as a target FPGA platform. Download the design and test bench files from the resources folder attached to this lecture and add them to the created project. Open the design header file. It defines the data type macro, which here is float. Then 
open the design source file and have a look at the code. This is the code that we saw earlier in this lecture. Open the test bench header file. It defines the end macro to represent the value of 10. Now let's look at the test bench source file. It defines a software implementation for the design as the golden model. Then in the main function, an array of 10 floating point value is declared. Then it calls the design end times and prints out the outputs. After that, it checks the final result with that of the golden model. Let's perform the C simulation. The result confirms the design functionality correctness. After finishing the C simulation, successfully perform the high level synthesis. The result shows that the design is not pipelined properly, as the initiation interval is 7. The main reason is the data dependency between two consecutive function calls on the ACC underscore state register. Export the RTL IP to be used later in a Vivado project. Now let's describe the floating point display driver in YTSHLS. Create a new YTSHLS project with the name of display underscore float dash YTSHLS for the basis tree board. Download the design files and add that to the created project. Open the design source files. The display driver subfunction utilizes a four state FSM to show four digits on the seven segment displays. The design subfunction receives a floating point number, extracts its digits, and calls the display underscore driver subfunction to generate the corresponding seven segment signals. The design assumes that the number has a two digit fractional part. Synthesize the code and export the RTL IP. We should design another IP to generate floating point numbers. Create a new YTSHLS project with the name of generate underscore float underscore number dash YTSHLS for the basis tree board. Download the design files and add them to the project. Have a look at the design header and source files. We saw them earlier in this lecture. Synthesize the code and export the RTLI. Now generate the Vivado project with the name of float underscore accumulator dash Vivado. Create a new block design. Add five IPs to the Vivado repository. Debouncer, display float, float accumulator, generate float numbers, 
and pulse generator IPs. Instantiate the IPs and connect them together. Add an ILA IP for monitoring some of the design signals. Customize the IP by adding seven probes to the ILA IP. Then connect that to the design signals.
download the design constraint file and add that to the project. Then generate the FPGA bitstream. Define the trigger boolean expression and start the ILA for sampling. Press the up push button on the board and examine the signals on the ILA waveform window. Try to understand the block level interface signals in the ILA waveforms. Play with the board and check the design functionality. The next lecture, we look at a port level interface that introduces a validity signal attached to each argument. These are our takeaway messages. The high level synthesis process may optimize the code by merging or removing registers and variables defined in the code. If you want to keep a register, then use a volatile modifier when you declare the corresponding variable. Describing hardware modules in HLS to generate input data for a design can be helpful in several occasions. Now the quiz question. What is the alternative way of using the volatile modifier to keep the register attached to the accumulator design's output port?